All right, so what we're working on here today is an 01 Honda Accord EX. And I am replacing the upper and lower ball joints. And I'm replacing this strut assembly. This is from Detroit Axle off Amazon. Okay. And this lower ball joint comes out real easy. You just pop it, beat it a few times, it comes out. I think it comes out this way. I just set it in there. But hit it about three or four times, it comes right out. Easy. The top one, eh, it's a little more tricky. I didn't take the upper control arm off. I'll show that in a minute. Brake line. Any car that's got 10 years on it needs brake lines replaced. This is the original brake line. And this is the bracket that holds the brake line. This is the strut. And most of these are 17 millimeter. I think the nut is an 18. Uh, this is about like a 30. Uh, these little guys here hold the the brake rotor on. And, and these are for the, the brake line bracket and the ABS sensor bracket. I always I'll put new uh, cotter pins. It's not a problem there, but this is what all this stuff looks like. This is a tool that I use for the upper ball joint, and I'll show you that in just a moment. All right, so I hope the sunlight doesn't mess things up too much. But uh, on this upper control arm, the bushings are fine. As a matter of fact, the ball joint was in pretty good shape. But I took the ball joint out while it was still installed with that tool. Uh, to get this out without that tool, you'd have to take these these bolts out up here. These two bolts. Okay, and slide that little guy out. It's not that big of a deal. It's easy to do with the strut out. If that's what you're going to do, take the strut out and remove this guy. But I just left him in. Took the brake line off. That's 10 millimeter. Here's where I found a problem. Uh, this tie rod end it's got a lot of slack in it. I mean, it's just floppy. So that's the only part that I don't have a new one for. So I'll get one of those, no problem. This is the ABS sensor. This is where a couple of those bolts go on this ABS sensor line wire here. So that's kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna go over some more details on the other side when I disassemble, all right? Okay, so we're just going to go over a few details about this driver's side. I'm going to take it apart a little bit at a time and try to get you caught up. On this uh, axle nut here, it's about a 30 millimeter. I just use a pointed uh, round file, uh, sorry, round punch there, and drive out that on each side and get it cleared so that when you turn it, it doesn't booger the end up there. I'm going to reuse this nut. If you're not comfortable with doing that, you can go get a brand new one. Okay? It's all you. But I'm going to pop this off. And I'm going to take this cotter pin out and take that nut off all the way to the end, but not all the way. And the same with this one here. I'm going to remove these 10 millimeters and get everything off of this spindle. And I'm going to take these 17 millimeters, I think that's what these are, 17s, take those out. I already took the brake line off because I, I took it to have another one made. And I wanted to make sure I got the right size. I am going to replace these, uh, but not today. I don't have the part yet. So, But I am going to replace the tie right ends. Both of them are a little wobbly. Uh, so let's let's get started on some of this stuff. All right, so I just made sure about this size of this nut. It's a, I measure it with Mike. Uh, it's 35.6 millimeters, which my 36 millimeter, there it is right there. My 36 millimeter socket will do the job. Uh, it's, it's close, close enough. It's a little rattly, but it's a tough socket and it's a tough nut. It'll be fine. You can tell on the edges where it's been removed before where it's got a little bit of a top on the crown there where it's hitting loose. So let me get this guy buzzed off of here. As you can see, it's turning just a little bit. You just got to toggle it somewhere. And it'll come off easy enough. So there's that there's that guy now this one here I've had it off when I put an engine in this car so it's 
it's lubed up and it's not froze up. That's good, right? All right, so let's get this cotter pin dealt with here. Now I've got a box of cotter pins, so I'm not really too worried about messing it up, but I like to take them out and demonstrate that it is possible to get this little guy out and still use it again. There you go. Good enough. I mean, you can use it again if you have to. And that thing on top there is 17 millimeter. There we go. 17 millimeter right there. Get that little thing busted loose. That's about all it takes. Comes off easy as pie. And then they just hit it a couple times with the hammer and it pops it off. I have to move my light. Got another light in here. These usually pop off pretty easy with just hitting it with a 16 ounce hammer. Sorry about the camera going upside down. There. That's all it takes. A couple of good a couple of good pops. Pops right out this guy here if you make sure you get that you see how it's turning in there well it's this one's not doing it. make sure you get this nut off far enough because once you get this pop loose sometimes this nut is too tight and you can't get it off so you either have to grab it with vice grips or push it back in there whenever that happens with me I get a floor jack and I put it under it I put the floor jack under it under here and push it back in there so I can get this nut off Okay, so just get it loose enough to get it off. And this one here, let's check it. Eh, it's it's okay. I'm gonna replace it. It's it's fairly tight, but I ordered a new one and the gasket's all fried. I'm just gonna replace it. But the other side was very very loose. The other side was the culprit for my excessive tire wear on this situation. All right. So as far as all these things are concerned, I just pop them all out like this all these little brackets I just get them all out because I don't want to bend them or get them cockeyed in any way I try to take care of these things they're, they're not very strong all they're doing is just holding this wire for the ABS sensor and the brake line so they don't do very much I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this ABS sensor out. Now after you get this tie rod end off, you can turn this out real easy and get to that ABS sensor bolt there. I'm not going to I'm not gonna take a video of me taking that out because everybody's probably getting seasick anyway from me flipping the camera around. So I'll get that out. We'll go. Let's see, this ABS sensor bolt is just a little bit longer than those other ones. These were the bolts for the... ABS sensor wire bracket and these are the bolts for the brake cable bracket here they're just a little different so that helps you figure out what's going on by keeping an eye on things that's how it comes apart that ABS sensor comes out easy this one is not stuck I've had it out before I like to take this off because I don't want to damage that wire see I want to get this wire and tuck it up out of the way somewhere so it doesn't get dinged and smashed and whatever else. All right, so we got that loose. I'm gonna take this brake caliper off. I'm gonna take it off by the bolts here to relieve some of the weight of this whole thing. Um, I've already drained the brake fluid out of that line and out of the caliper. Most of it, probably not all of it, but I always keep a drip pan just in case something drips and catch that brake fluid because it's very poisonous. All right, so these are the two bolts that hold this caliper bracket on. There's one here at the top. There's one there at the bottom somewhere. I can't see it without looking around, but anyway. One there at the bottom. So what you want to do is get these out. Clean them up nice and pretty. Wire wheel. Brake clean. Put some blue Loctite on them. And put it back in there. Uh, these come out pretty easily. The torque is very high. Probably 
you know about 35 foot pounds or something in that range there okay all right so i wanted everybody to see this all that black stuff there i just poured that out of the brake caliper okay i pushed the piston in the rest of the way and there was a nasty black brake fluid in there so this is proof positive that this brake fluid need to be changed i knew it needs to be changed it's probably the original stuff so change your brake fluid it looks like that it's not working good and it corrodes the inside of the parts not a good idea all right so i'm going to take these three uh, these two uh phillips head bolts out i have a very large screwdriver for that oh i don't know what the number is this screwdriver is so old stanley 275 4-103 whatever it's a big one it's got a big old end on it and it fits in here and that's all you need you be careful with these you booger them all up you'll have lots of problems so let me get this i need to hold my other hand and get them out so hang on right caliper's got a little rust on it stuck a little bit i put some deep creep on there Just warm it up a little bit with the heat gun tap it a few times it'll come right off When I put this back together, I'll put a little bit of disc brake paste in there to lubricate the inside of that to keep it from sticking so bad. And I haven't done a brake job on this car or ever pulled this off, so this stuff has been on here for a long time. All right, so I hit it about four times from the back back here with a hammer and turned it a couple of times while I was hitting it. And it comes loose and it's not that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal. It's just got rust in there, making it stick. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my vice grips. I'm gonna take three bolts out for this dust cover. There's three bolts in there. You will not be able to get these bolts out with a Phillips head screwdriver. I don't know where their mine was, but I'm gonna loosen it with the vice grips and then I can take it out the rest of the way with my big screwdriver. There's three of them there. So let's let's have a look. All right, so I've got it on there. You just turn it a little bit like that. Once you get it loose, you can use your screwdriver, but you will not be able to do it without burgering up that, that Phillips head. It's just too much of an angle. It won't fit in there very good. Where's that other one? There it is. There we go. Not that bad of a deal. Once you get it loose, just get in there with the screwdriver and you can turn it at an angle a little bit. Comes out. Easy peasy. You'll see you in a minute while I'm doing while I'm doing this. That one's a little tight still. All right, all right. So I got that thing loose, so I can turn it. Now what I want to do, that dust shield doesn't come. I just want access so that I can hit this, the end of this, and pop this lower ball joint loose. But I'm not going to do that yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this top one loose, stop ball joint loose. I'm going to take this nut off of this. Uh, bracket that holds the strut there's a nut right here yeah there's one there pinch bolt pinch bolt here let's see yeah there's a nut down here and a bolt that bolt that goes through sometimes those are corroded so they're they get tricky all right so there's the pinch bolt so there's that bracket that holds the strut now this is a 14 millimeter and as you can see, it was a little rusty. It came out nice with the impact. But if you don't have an impact, you know, it's going to be a little drop. Put some anti-seas. You go back together, you might need some lube to get it off. But what, this bolt has to come all the way out. You see, when you put it in through there, it crosses that center, center line a little bit and locks that locks that strut in there. That strut has a little divot in there that matches that. 
So that's got to come out. I take this thing all the way off, clean it up, and put it back clean. So that's how I do it. You don't always have to take it all the way off, but that's just how I do it. Now this struts out. It's nice and loose. I'm going to pop this guy next. I'm going to pop this, uh, this spindle assembly, whatever you want to call this thing. That's the thing that comes off next for me. And I do it in a certain order, and that's the way I do it. You can do it any way you want, but this is how I like to do it. So. I like to put that heat gun on it, heat it up a little bit before I hit it. You can do this with a torch if you want to, but the torch is a little more dangerous. But if that's all you got, you know, you can just heat it up with a torch a little bit, get it to about a couple hundred degrees, and then you can whack it with the hammer. Alright, so I got that little guy off. You can see I just hit it here a couple times, probably about four times. Pops off, no big deal. Now, that's all out of the way. This upper control arm is just hanging here, okay? And it's leaning up against that strut, and that's how I like it. I take those bolts out of the top, and that strut will fall down, but it'll fall down just a little bit, and this thing will catch it, and it's nice. <clears throat> Got two 12s and three 14s. We buzz that last one out there. Let her drop. There we go. Bolt flew into the sky. That's all right. I've got new ones. Anyway, so that guy just kind of flops down into this A arm and, and it doesn't fall out onto the top of your foot. So it takes two hands to get it out from here, but just raise this up. That'll let it loose. Then you can go back to reverse with the brand new one. It's easy. That's the way I do it. Okay, so here's the driver's side one, the left one, and here's that little divot. And you'll see how it lines up with them bolts up there at the top. Okay? And these are the brand new ones. Now this one has a collar around here to limit how far it goes in this little alignment pin right here. You don't have any choice. That part must go there. The rest of it, sometimes these things aren't clocked very well. So let's have a look and see how we're clocked. Let's have a look. This one here looks to be clocked just the opposite of this one. Let's look here. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, that's not too bad. Yep, there we go, okay. And there's that bolt right there, see? So that's not too bad. That one's lined up nice. Let's look at this other one. This is the one for the other side. And it's, there we go. See how it's flagged off this way? And that one is flagged off that way with those smaller 12 millimeter bolts. So, looks like they did a pretty good job. This would be the driver's side. This would be the passenger side or the front right. This one would be the front left. So, let me get that little guy lined up in there. Before I get ahead of myself, I need to pull that upper ball joint out. So let me get the tool hooked up on here so everybody can see how I did it on the on the right side. This is the left side. I didn't take a video of taking it off. I took a video of it after it was out. So let's slow down a little bit and have a better look at things. All right, so what I've got on here is an OTC ball joint press. So I just put it on there on that end. Uh, dug up a collar that fit around that ball joint and that's it that's all there is to it hit it with the impact buzz that little guy out comes out so sort of walk in the park uh, if I had pulled this arm out which is fairly easy with the strut out because all you got to do is take those two bolts out you know like on the other side same thing this is all in good enough shape that I don't need to do that I'll just do it right here and install the new one right here the same way Let's get this thing out. All right, so there we go. Comes out pretty, pretty easily. Pops it right out. No beating with the hammer. Just presses it out. I love these things. All right, so this is where confusion can set in. 
Let's see this stock factory Honda upper ball joint has a little divot in there. You see those two little divots, all right? It's got a dot in the control arm and it's got a small dot on that ball joint there and line it up. All right, so if you have a Honda part, that's how it lines up. This is where it gets tricky. Now, this Moog part, this is a Moog problem solver upper ball joint, okay? And it has a hole in it for the alignment slot. And with this ball joint comes instructions that say, install alignment hole slash notch facing the wheel. So it goes just the opposite of the factory one, like this. It's going to go just the opposite. See? That notch is there. This is going to go 180 degrees away. So, that's the difference on this Moog part. And if you look at the other side, you'll see that it has a long gated slot in there and it's designed to to fit in there a certain way the manufacturer moog has determined that it goes in 180 degrees out so that's what we're going to do we're going to install it the right way so there you go read the directions if you have a honda ball joint it goes in the line the notches line up moog ball joint 180 degrees out so that's how we're going to do it all right Well, we all have to go to the learning place sometimes. That fancy ball joint press business would not stick this guy in there straight. I've got it in there now, but I wasted a lot of time with that ball joint press. Anyway, I got it in there with this piece of drill stem right here. I ended up having to take that upper control arm off, obviously. And I uh, had some drill pipe that fit... Uh, that fit around here the, in the right spot, just nice and beautiful. And I just put it in there and I beat it in there with a hammer, just boy, just like I owned it, okay? Now, that was the easy part. The hard part was putting this stupid clamp on here. My, my, my. What I did is that little ring clamp that holds this grease thing, grease cover on here. I put that ring gas, that ring uh, clamp all the way up here at the top. And then I used a pick. There's no way impossible I could uh, film this because it's moving constantly out of the view. And anyway, that's a tricky job putting that little ring clamp on there. And uh, I hope you figure it out. I figured it out. Uh, it stretches out a little bit. Just have to stretch it out a little bit. Put it on on first on the bottom right here where my finger is. Put it on there first, and then put this grease cover on, and then use the pick to work it over the edge and get it on there it's a tricky job so let's go back together with this thing okay so we're going back together I got them two 14 millimeter bolts tightened down with some blue Loctite I got my strut placed in here and what I like to do is I hold the strut at the bottom like this here with one hand okay and with the other hand I, I pull this upper a arm up out of the way and I slide it up into the hole. Now, from here, you can see the holes when that strut is down. And slide up in them holes and push this A-arm down up against it and hold it with your left hand and reach up around with your right hand and put a couple of nuts on. Up here on top. That makes it easy. That helps hold it. So that's how I do it. All right, so here's the lower ball joint here. I used that same piece of drill stem I had and I just tapped it in there and I heated that thing up. I heated this uh, housing up here, this collar around here. I heated that up with a heat gun to a couple hundred degrees and just drove this in with my three pound hammer. And this particular setup, it has a ring, uh, ring clip that goes in here. So I've got it driven far enough for that ring clip to go in this little guy here. I'm going to put that in and check my gap, see how tight it is. If it needs a little more, I'll give it a little bit more. But uh, according to my edge here, there might just be a hair a bit more it can go. 
but uh, if you do this carefully it'll be fine I do not have the special tools required to do this obviously I've already tried it and uh, it's not working too good so we just do it the old school way all right all right so I got the snap ring on there it's set in there just fine so I've got it driven down far enough now I'm gonna set this guy on there and uh, proceed with the rest of the assembly here all right well we're just moving right along here I tighten these little screws up with the screwdriver as tight as I could and then I tighten my quarter turn with the vice grips now if you bend this or ding it or whatever no big deal just make sure and bend it back or at least check it after you put the rotor on because it'll make a heck of a noise and you won't be happy now I tightened up the bolts on top up here tightened up them my pinch bolt is tight lock tight on that I just lined up this bolt here and you can use a long punch or the bolt the bolt has a, uh, a graduated end on the end for alignment purposes but I use this cheater bar to push this lower control arm down a little bit to help help line that up so that lower control arm is sprung a little bit okay and to line this up you'll have to push it down some okay so that's kind of how things are looking. I need to tighten up a few bolts. We're moving right along. Alright, so got the cotter pin on, got the grease zerk on, don't forget that. This little bracket here has an alignment pin that clocks it in the correct spot so this ABS line doesn't get in a bind. Got all my bolts, I'm going to tighten up all those. Brake line bracket, got that on. Got the uh, ABS sensor down there on. I do not tighten these up more than a hundred inch pounds, okay? These don't need to be tightened up big time. I took them out with an impact, that's fine. Putting it back, you need to put it back with a hand wrench. All right, so got this nut tightened up and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little dimple just right in the center of this so that when it comes time to take it off, comes time to take it off I'll use the same punch and then I can push it up on each side of the dimple and it will come out easily all right all right so one of the other things I did is I had some stainless steel braided uh, brake lines made and of course they don't have this fancy crimp that goes in the middle so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the, a slot in this crimp right here and get rid of this fitting I'm going to cut a slot in this so I can take this hose out and mount it back on here and place this new hose in it and I'll probably put just a piece of tubing over it or something and protect it with, uh, with that and put a, a safety wire on it to hold it down to this bracket. Okay so I got things cleaned up pretty good and I got that bracket cut I'm just going to set that brake line in there and get it routed like this it's gonna set in there like that I'm gonna put a piece of tubing over that and safety tie it in there and oh, this banjo fitting will go right here now the other end I didn't tighten it up yet so I could turn it but once I get it oriented the right way on here I'll uh, I'll tighten up that top part there's not much else left to do put the wheel on and all that but most for the most part this thing is done all right so that's what it looks like with the hose on it and a couple of zip ties all right so here we are this is the new problem solver tie right in for the right side it's got a marking up in there for, with an R but this is what it looks like it's kind of a square it looks pretty heavy duty like it's a nice quality I like the boot stuff so there we are uh, but what you want to do is when you change this tie rod in you put the end on here to hold it you get a 19 millimeter in there. You get a 19 millimeter on this jam nut you loosen this jam nut up and you put some vice grips on that threaded rod from the rack and pinion steering unit you want to hold this thing so it doesn't turn and mess your pillows all up so let's get this thing done and what you're going to do is if you 
need to mark it, that's fine, but I always just go by the nut here at the top. I always go by that to tell me how many turns. Okay, you're gonna take this off, count your turns, put it back on the same way. Okay, so I've got it all tightened up on there. Cotter pin, jam nuts tight. Don't forget to put some grease in your grease zerk. I got one there. Of course, I got one here. You're doing the upper ball joint. And that's it. Uh, got it all together. It's looking good. Y'all take it easy.